Um, hello, everyone. Um, my name is Luigi. Um, I'm here to present about uh, my, my project, my pet project, called Cyber Ether. Uh, it's a uh, heterogeneous accelerated uh, GUI visualization uh, for GNU Radio and other projects. Um, so I will start uh, talking a little bit more how it came to be the project and also proceed to where it is in the, at the moment and what makes cyber effort uh, different and how it works. And finalize with future and GNU radio uh, integration. Uh, Um, all right, so first uh, section is early development. So I apologize the amount of tweets in this presentation. Um, so everything started when I started another project um, to run, um, to connect with an SDR using your browser, using web USB. So ev every co USB call from LibUSB was being translated to web USB using a C++ C wrapper uh, working with WebAssembly. And uh, I got this to work, uh, it works with uh, RSPY, but I, had, I needed a way to display the information on the screen. So I wrote a quick and dirty uh, open GL using WebGL uh, to display the data and that was uh, the first iteration of the project. And later, I figured that that visualization was good enough and I could take advantage from being, um, being, being on the bare metal on the, on the OS. So I decided to port from web to uh, application and start to um, dive a bit more on that. Um, so, uh, then, after the OS application was ready, I started to code some accelerators like CUDA QFFT library to do the FFT, and that way I could run uh, 60 plus megahertz at this, uh, in real time, and also run on nice boards like the Jetson Nano and other uh, CUDA enabled computers. Um, so, Dev Nulling. Uh, he suggested that uh, what's the chance of this being on a or out of three blog on GNU Radio? And I thought about the idea and said, "Oh yeah, that's a very great idea." So um, I did it. Um, I added, uh, I wrapped my code with GNU Radio uh, using the GR mod tool, and everything works as expected. And just the fun of it. I ported my OS application running the same render on Chrome, so I could run the same thing from the desktop on Chrome using uh, WebUSB, um, WebGL, and also uh, WebAssembly. Um, the only funny thing is that you can't have a multi-threading with a WebAssembly. They, they use a shared uh, buffer, and the shared buffer is problematic because some uh, x86 exploits, um, so that uh, is now disabled by default. Um, when it gets re-enabled, we can uh, uh, revisit this project. So section two, uh, what is a cyber effort at the moment? Um, so it's a portable and heterogeneously uh, uh, accelerated GUI for radio signals. So it's not built to display um, uh, statistics and stuff. Uh, it's built to, from the ground up to display only signals generated by SDRs. Um, and it currently offers uh, some basic, basic plots like line plot, uh, waterfall and spectrogram visualizations. Um, it runs as close to the metal as possible using a heterogeneous API for, of course, battery and, and, and speed. And one important thing is to use like minimal dependencies with a modular design because no one wants to install 500 dependencies to make the thing compile. Um, so um, it will 
a check uh, which dependencies are there and it will compile just the modules that has all the dependencies so you don't need to uh, worry about that very much and uh, the, the code is, is the application is uh, reduced by uh, writing a abstraction graphical and compute APIs layer. So instead of talking directly to Vulkan or OpenGL, you talk with the render, and the render will translate the common uh, calls to the backend API, so you don't need to rewrite your code for every backend you want to write. Um, and yeah, and it is also very uh, easy to implement on third parties projects. Uh, we don't um, make you use any window manager or something. It's just a frame buffer and you can bind anywhere. Um, so the first uh, plot is the uh, line plot. It's a line. Um, it's a very simple lightweight to, way to see frequency domain or time domain data and has uh, very little memory requirements and also uh, does not store data uh, beyond uh, the first uh, time iteration uh, other than uh, averaging. Um, the second one is the waterfall. So here is also a very good way to visualize frequency domain data, but this time uh, changing in, in time. And this has uh, larger memory requirements because you need to save all the data from previous steps and, and the data is retained. And one cool thing is that you can use a cyber ether if you are using CUDA, for example, to extract the frame buffer from the waterfall and feed directly to your machine learning model. So the copy would be internal on the GPU and that would be very fast. You can run your inference and plot the data out like a unit or just uh, have a text uh, output on screen with, with markings. Um, and we also, this is, uh, fairly new, a uh, spectrogram view. So this is the same thing as waterfall, but better. Um, you can see the same, like uh, a different perspective as a waterfall and has nice animations, it's colorful, everyone likes it. Um, and the current implementations run on the CPU, you don't need to run on a CUDA, so most of these uh, visualizations have uh, CPU fallback, so for example, you are running on a potato computer, you don't have any fancy heterogeneous API to use, you can use the CPU to render, that's not a problem. Um, demo, maybe. Okay. All right, um, so uh, I will start here. So this is a Lime SDR block, uh, soapy source. Uh, everyone is um, used to it, I guess. Um, and this is the GNU Radio cyber, uh, uh, cyber at first sync. Uh, this is a very uh, early uh, prototype, so there's not many uh, 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 parameters here. So first is FFT size. You can change this at whatever you want. If you want more time uh, variations, you put a lower value here. Also, a buffer multiplier if you need to uh, run something that is uh, a little bit heavier. And also, you can choose the, the compute backend. You can choose with whatever heterogeneous uh, backend you want. And also, graphical, metal, or Vulkan um, at the moment. So if you run this, You can see the data streaming in. And yeah, this is the line line plot, the spectrogram, and also the waterfall. And the nice thing here is that you can zoom in, and everything is handled by a computer shader, a graphical shader. So you don't need to run that back and forth, your, G your CPU and GPU, and display data. Um, there is also plans to integrate uh, more uh, controls here with uh, better UI. But yeah, this is the current uh, state of the GNU radio. Um, okay, now. Yeah. 
Thank you. Um, so some uh, specifications. Uh, it's written on modern C plus plus twenty. Yeah, uh, compiled with Meson, so don't need to deal with C make hell. Uh, and utilizes FFTW3 on the CPU base FFT and QFFT with CUDA and Vulkan VK FFT with Vulkan. Um, and the standard way to contribute to it with it is with a GitHub pull request. Um, so what you saw uh, back there, uh, this is the flow chart of the data. So first we get a circular buffer, then we pass to FFT, we scale, do some windowing things. And, I was, and then we pass the same data to the line plot waterfall spectrogram and plot that on the screen. Um, yeah, um, and this is, um, so the green ones are running on CUDA and the white, the blue ones were writing, uh, is running on metal or Vulcan. Um, uh, so section three, how and why? Um, so I will expand on the on what I said before. So cyber Ether is built on ground up to display signals generated by SDRs. And this has some advantages, like less code to optimize. You don't need to optimize all the code for everything. And more importantly, it's real time. So it's built to run on real time. You are not hacking a plot to run on 120 FPS. You, you built something to run on that speed. Uh, without uh, data dynamic allocations, everything is steadily allocated and, and runs after instantiation. And also, other, f other, other features are not required to be um, uh, supported. And uh, it's more friendly to integrate with project. As I said, it's just a frame buffer. You can bind anywhere. And it's, um, it's, you can expand the user interaction uh, to support some uh, SDR signals instead of supporting uh, statistical work. Um, another thing is the it runs as close to as as the to the metal as possible using heterogeneous APIs like Metal, Vulkan, and Web GPU when that becomes available in the early 2023, apparently. Uh, so you can render the blocks with that graphic APIs using the backends. Um, and also accelerated compute like CUDA, Metal, and Vulcan. Um, CUDA being the more popular there. And the above graph and compute accelerated pipelines will cover uh, Apple, Apple Silicon M1, uh, iOS, Android, NVIDIA GPUs, uh, desktop or Jetson uh, embedded ones, and also AMD GPUs with Vulcan and uh, Hasbro Pi with the V3D uh, driver that um, Collabora just uh, is is maintaining uh, for the uh, Hasbro Pi 4, so you can run even that on a Raspberry Pi, Raspberry Pi 4 when the Vulkan API is ready. Um, and more importantly, it's CPU-based compute fallback. So if you don't have any fancy things, you can run on a browser anywhere that runs Chrome and it will uh, work fine. Um, and dependencies are not mandatory. It compiles with the available ones. Um, and another very important thing of the projects is the code duplication. You don't want to write to, to make like the VK frequency sync um, that will be limited to Vulkan uh, or something because that can change the future and if that changes in the future, your code is basically uh, useless. So uh, supporting a multiple uh, graphical and compute APIs is very important. So you can uh, write a new backend for a new fancy API in the future and reuse your current uh, code with that. Um, and for that, I wrote Jetstream Render that is basically a render. Um, it, it, it will abstract uh, uh, graphical calls to from from the application and, and to a backend like Vulkan or Metal. Um, I already wrote uh, OpenGL uh, render for this and also uh, Metal. I am currently working on the Metal one because I have a MacBook and Apple decided to deprecate OpenGL. Um, 
uh, uh, maybe Vulcan in the future, yeah, probably Vulcan in the future. And also, I want to work maybe DirectX and WebGPU. Um, uh, the graphical backend can be selected during runtime, so you don't need to compile your code using a define and wait five minutes to compile. Uh, you just need to toggle that on, for example, the generator block, and it will work with the selected uh, uh, backend. And the same thing applies with modules. So we have Jetstream modules. It will um, uh, it will abstract the the, the 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 compute work required because visualization is not just visualization. You s you need to do some uh, pre-processing of the data. So this will handle that, and everything is. Uh, bounded to a block. So CUDA block for scaling is just a CUDA kernel that is uh, up, uh, multiplying by a factor. And that kernel is uh, combined with other kernels uh, in the pipeline using CUDA graphs. So you don't need to worry about your CPU speed for instantiation. Everything will be pre-cached. Uh, all kernel, kernel instantiation will be pre-cached and will be run on whatever you need. Um, and also, you can select that on runtime, and it, the, the backend will support a mixed match of backends, uh, but that's not ideal because you have some certain uh, asynchronous uh, synchronization boundaries between uh, graphical uh, com between different APIs, for example, CUDA and Metal, that you need to wait until CUDA is done to start the Metal work instead of running everything asynchronously with CUDA. So um, that's a boundary that, that's not ideal, but it will work fine. So it's easy to implement on third-party projects. So we, this combined with the fact that we have minimal dependencies make this thing very useful to implement on iOS, macOS, Android, Mac, and even a browser um, because it's First, front-end agnostic. You don't need to to use Qt to to display things. Uh, you just have a headless frame buffer being uh, rendered, and that can be bind using um, t uh, a Qt a Qt surfaces or Cocoa or a Metal Kit will on whenever whenever you whatever you want. Um, and in Linux, you even can use DMA buff to um, share your frame buffer with other processes. So if you want to, for some reason, uh, run your program on a headless machine and then, uh, uh, in a headless process and then uh, share that with a windowing application, you can with DMA buff. So too long to read. It's easy to implement on everywhere. So uh, the last session, a brief one, uh, future and current generated implementation. Um, so line plot, waterfall, spectrograms are the current uh, graphical interfaces. Uh, CPU uh, implementations of all of them are ready. Uh, Metal is also ready with line plot and waterfall. I'm work are currently working on uh, parting spectrogram to Metal and also the uh, pipeline is done, but I didn't port to the new ref latest refactor that I did with on the library. Um, some compute uh, modules are CPU at the moment because I am uh, focusing on adding capability at this moment and then writing the, the, CUDA, the, the other um, compute modules for other application for other backends. Uh, but same thing, CUDA is written, but it's not ported yet because I have a MacBook. Uh, and also in the future, I, um, I want to implement Siberia inside a QT window to run uh, more smoothly with Akino Radio and also add more metal and graphical uh, backends. Uh, compute with metal, that is a thing, and also compute uh, graphical with Vulkan backends to make, make use of VK, FFT, and other, other accelerators for for your, for your project. And also, Fonts part, uh, that's a little bit tricky to implement. And if we implement it, 
it will be hard to make changes and we are in our current state and there are a lot of changes. So I'm putting the font spark text rendering like labels axes and stuff uh, forward. So we don't have this problem at the moment because speed is more important at the moment. Um, and I also improved the handling of multiple compute backends at the same time. As I mentioned, you need to resynchronize every time you cross uh, APIs like CUDA to Metal or Vulkan. So uh, that's uh, something to think about. Um, no demo? Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, thanks for listening. Uh, please contact me uh, anywhere. Uh, I am on Twitter. Uh, send me an email. Contact me here in the conference. I will be happy to give you like a demonstration, a better demonstration, and and also answer your questions here and now on. And you can find uh, Cyber if you're on GitHub. It's an open source project. Uh, there is a out of tree module also on my GitHub called uh, GR Cyber. You can find the link on the Cyber if you're, uh, repository. Um, yeah. So, are there any questions in the room? If not, please think about questions while I read one from the internet. Um, Noto asks, is Cyber either designed to support remote visualization? If it is, is the bulk of processing power required on the computer that runs the flow graph or the one doing the display? So can Cyber either you know, run on two computers where one has the flow graph with the radio in it and the other one does the visualization? And how is like, the compute split? OK, um, so that's uh, not that trivial because um, you need to, you, you are ideally displaying your information where you are processing it because the data after processing is larger than the current data that you receive from the radio uh, in some cases. Uh, that's a good question. In theory, you can pipe the frame buffer to uh, Ethernet or something to another computer and render that there as a possibility. And uh, yeah, that, that's open. Thank you. Any other questions? So actually, while I was walking the room, like people are actively using your project and trying to compile it and, and you know some fail some for some it works some are porting it forward so, I'm so yeah I'm, I'm sorry <laughs> <It's not compiling. laughs> yeah uh, I went to some seg faults too and something with um, Mac OS uh, synchronization um, I'm trying to fix it yeah, so I guess the right way to move forward, like if they have something that fixes or if they've noticed a new problem, is it like GitHub issues or PRs or? Oh, oh yeah, hit me on Twitter, uh, GitHub PR. If you write or fix yourself, that's better. Uh, just submit to you uh, as a PR and I will um, review it uh, with the community. I'm open uh, uh, for contributions. Uh, if you have any suggestions how to improve the code, just open an issue or open a community um, forum there and we can talk about it, how to make things better for everyone. Yeah, thanks. So I, I don't want to do like a penalty moment of silence for everyone not asking a question here, but you know, you, you can always prepare questions. Um, but then the next speaker might slowly move in the direction, general direction of the stage um, as we as we uh, shift over. Um, friendly reminder: we are putting basically all the slides on our event site. So if you if you need them, you can download them later. Um, the recordings, the video recordings, are later cut and uh, preserved on YouTube or your local hard drive if you're into decentralization. Um, and you're always welcome to you know follow up with speakers so that's the whole point of speaking here is probably you know getting in touch with it, you know, your own community so give a warm hand of applause for ego uh, for sorry luigi